All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the channel. I'm Pacific Casual Gamer, and sorry about all the noises going wrong in the house. It's the terrible time to film, but I got this idea. I want to tell you guys about the difference between Civilization Revolution and Civilization VI, because if you've ever played on Xbox, you know that there's a lot. Uh, so to get started, the hexagons. Civ VI has a hexagon system instead of a grid-based system. It's still a hexagon grid, but not squares, and it makes moving around very even, actually. It's not like uh, how in Revolution, you know, you could move diagonal, so it was kind of like moving up and sideways at the same time, and you could explore more area. In this one, there's no real movement exploits. So that's going to be a big, big change to the game that, I mean, it really doesn't affect the game a whole lot, other than, well, I guess you can attack cities differently. And with that being said, we are going to talk about combat. Combat is where a lot of people are going to get caught up in this game. So when it comes to combat, you, first of all, cannot stack units. Sort of. So let's say I have two swordsmen. I can't put two swordsmen in the same square. So what you can do is you have a, uh, they call them the combat units, a civilian unit, and a support unit on the same square. So you can put a swordsman and a settler and a drone in the same square. And this brings to the table something else, which is you have to do some research before you can make armies. And there's cores and there's armies. So you know how in Civilization Revolution you put three units together, you make an army? In this one, two makes a core, three makes an army. And that's just how it is in this game. Now when you attack cities, if you have the proper technologies researched and a wall, they will fight back. They can do ranged attacks. And they have city health. So it isn't, there's no units in the city, attack it. It's, you have to take down the city's health. Which brings into the different combat strengths. Instead of it being like, uh, okay, archers. <clears throat> Instead of them having two defense and one attack, they have an attack strength. And since they're archers, they have a ranged attack strength. Archers have a range of two. So you can attack something from two square, two squares, hexagons away. Uh, but, like, you're not going to have a situation where, okay, if you play the stats game right, a catapult army, if they attack a tank, has a 50% chance of beating them. A tank army. That doesn't happen. The tank will take, like, two damage. And then will probably proceed to then attack the catapult and destroy it. Because that's what tanks do to catapults. So you're going to have to get used to not unit stacking, ranged units, units that have different ranges. I mean, there's some units that have four range. Like, you can attack something four hexagons away. That's something that you get used to. Uh, siege units, they're just units that avoid walls. You're going to get used to that. Just build a ram. Oh, your units do damage to the walls. Which is actually something city walls don't increase defense stat. They give the city a second layer of health, and the city heals every turn. And with that second layer of health, it gets a little bit confusing, but basically, if something attacks it, and it's not a siege unit, or you don't have a ram or a siege tower, you don't do as much damage to the wall. So you really have to combine siege units, like catapults, with melee units, like swordsmen or spearmen, and then, of course, archers. And there's a, there's a couple more unit classes. I know in, in Revolution... It boiled down to attack unit, defense unit, uh, siege unit, and then the cavalry. Well, in this game, there's melee unit, there's anti-cavalry, which is your spearmen. So you actually have warriors and spearmen at the same time. There's ranged unit, archers. There's siege unit, which is like artillery or catapults. There's uh, many different types of boats. There's raiders, there's the ranged boats, the melee boats, there's the aircraft carriers, and it leads into more army composition. There's also light and heavy cavalry. I believe there's medium cavalry, but I might be wrong on that. I don't pay attention too much to that. So you have a lot of different options, and it makes the game more complicated because just because you built a horseman doesn't mean they're going to get upgraded to a tank. Actually, they will. 
but you know different cavalry types like light cavalry they go into different things uh, another thing you gotta get used to the tech tree is pretty much the same I don't think anyone's gonna have a problem with the tech tree the culture tree that's what I call it it's the civics tree really easy to understand uh, but another thing you're gonna have to get used to is the governments so before there was a government like let's just say the Republic where you pick the Republic and settlers cost one instead of two population now it's you pick your government and you have all these different policies to pick from and the governments do different things so for instance you pick a government with two military policy slots you get out of those military policies available to you you get to pick two uh, that sort of thing it's actually a really easy system to understand I don't want to explain it too much it's just oh this government has three yellow slots you can put three yellow things in you know and you learn very quickly which ones you like and which ones you don't like uh, improving tiles that's something that'll be new to people that uh, didn't play any other civilization game other than revolution and roads are a big thing too so the way that you do it is when it comes to roads you have trader units and wherever the traders go they build roads so let's say I have London and Bristol and I want to make a road from London to Bristol then I have to send my trader on a trade route and it's a new system the trade routes guys is super easy you just build trader units and send them to other cities and they give you bonuses to the city that they are from so if a trader goes from London to Bristol London gets bonuses and they also build a road you can also use a unit called a military engineer they can build two roads and then they die it kind of sucks but hey uh, when it comes to tile improvements you're gonna get a union a new unit called the builder and what the builder does is allows you to improve tiles so for instance the hills you can build a mine on the hills and it gets an extra production you build a farm in a field and it gets more food so you can really specialize your cities and it's more than just okay there's a lot of grassland around so the city is going to have a lot of population there's a lot of ocean around so it's going to get a lot of trade it's more than that you can really especially in the modern age engineer the environment to your advantage now if you've ever seen any gameplay of Civ 6 you would know that there are districts and what it is so let's say you want to build a market well you have to build a commercial hub first and so you put that commercial hub and it takes the tile and replaces it so let's say it's a grassland tile you put the commercial hub on the grassland tile and the grassland tile goes away and becomes a commercial hub tile okay then you get to build your markets and your banks and your stock exchanges so that provides an interesting situation where if I'm a jerk player I can pillage your commercial hub and you got to rebuild your market your bank your stock exchange or you know maybe you build it next to a river that floods well if the river floods your commercial hub gets destroyed and you got to rebuild it so that's kind of what it does the districts they can get advantages too so if you build the commercial hub next to a river or a harbor you get bonuses it's pretty easy system to understand that's gonna be way different for the people uh, playing this game now uh, something that revolution does is your trade right so let's say you generate uh, 10 trade in a city you can pick between having it produce science or gold it's different in this game it's way 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 different uh, in this game you have a science production and a gold production all of what you would call trade produces gold in this game so the ocean tiles produce gold and you build the different buildings to produce extra science so you build a campus district and then you build a library and a, a university a science lab that will that's how you get more science plus just generally having more population more cities will generate you more science so that's a system that you got to get used to there's a new religion system where it, you have a religion and it gives you benefits and you can participate in theological combat which is a pretty easy system to understand you just basically hope that you build your religion fast enough to get a great profit and then you found your religion and buy units with faith and it gives you different buffs you get to customize it especially early on if you can get the first religion you can customize your religion to do anything like more food more gold I believe there's ways to get more science well it's kind of funny because well it's a religion I, I wouldn't see why it would give you more science but I don't know and that's most of the different things I mean a bigger map more civilizations trading is different very customizable like 
you can you can't trade technologies but let's say I want open borders with you and I'll pay you 15 gold you can haggle say no I want 20 or three gold per turn for 30 turns or something like that you can haggle like that one of the things that is in revolution that is expanded upon in Civ 6 is resource gathering so let's just take iron okay iron is a resource that if you want to build a swordsman or a knight I don't know what that sounds like. you need to have iron you must have iron and you build a mine it generates iron and then you spend that iron to build a swordsman I'll get done with this and put them in the dryer okay water transportation is way different in this game in this game you don't have to build a galley and then put units on the galley and send them away. There's a system called embarking, where you have your boats, they don't do anything. They don't transport troops. What you do is you embark a unit. So let's say I have a swordsman and I have this technology and I gotta get him across the water. Well, I embark him in the water and use his movement points and then he just moves like a normal water unit. You can have amphibious war where you, let's say the uh, swordsman's embarked on a coastline and you wanna attack an archer can send him off the boat into the shore to attack the archer, and he gets a combat penalty unless he's upgraded properly. That system is really nice because you don't have to build a bunch of galleys and caravels everywhere. You just move your units around, send them off to do their own thing. Uh, first, it's the same kind of technology where first you develop the coastal water so you can only move in coast and then you develop it to where you can go into deep water. It's still that same kind of system where it's technology research. Oh, wonders also take up a tile, so you can't, like, have, like, if you build the Great Library, it has to be built on a grassland or whatever next to a campus. There's requirements, too, so you can't just go, oh, hanging gardens. It's, no, the hanging gardens needs to be built, I think it's, like, next to a river or an aqueduct. Or, for instance, the Colossus needs to be built on a water tile next to a harbor. So... When it comes to wonders, you gotta do that. You also can't buy wonders. You can buy buildings, you can buy units, but wonders, no, 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 you have to build them. You have to build them, you have to fight for them. And you better build them, because if you go to build a wonder, and you don't have the production lines to do it, someone else is gonna build it, and you're gonna have wasted all that time, because the production will not carry over, so you can't, Build a wonder, have it almost be done, and then transfer that production over to like a free settler. No, no, no. It's that production is on that wonder. Same with the buildings, actually. If you build a market, uh, let's say it takes 60 production, I don't know the specific, 60 production to build a market, and you put 30 into it. It will stay at 30 forever until you continue building it. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions or there's anything I missed, feel free to ask in the comments below. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I will see you guys in the next one.